It was a busy weekend in BYU sports. The BYU football program kicked things off Friday night with the official hire of their 10th and final assistant coach in Kevin Gilbride. Saturday afternoon brought us the first two wins in Big 12 play for both the BYU men's and women's basketball programs. And I did no podcasting over the weekend. We're going to talk about all of it on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. By way of introduction, this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself and pursue a Jace case today, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. All right. A lot to cover on today's show. And as I said in the open, I did not do any podcasting over the weekend. Had, let's just put it this way, dad duties get in the way and had some other things pop up. But nonetheless, uh, excited to see the BYU finally made their 10th hire for their assistant coaching pool in the football program Friday evening. 7 o'clock thereabouts was the official announcement. That was 7 o'clock mountain time. So, uh, I was working out of pocket that night, so uh, podcasting that night was completely out of the question as I was out of the house and away from my computer. But nonetheless, I think uh, Kevin Gilbride, who comes to BYU now with 20 years of experience, a guy who actually originally started his playing career way back when in 1998 as a freshman quarterback at BYU before transferring to Hawaii, this is a guy who's got credentials. And that's the one thing I think BYU wanted, is they wanted somebody to come in and, and take over a, a, a position group that, frankly, Frankly, the tight end position group was one of the better position groups on all the BYU football roster. For whatever reason, uh, Aaron Roderick as well as Kalani Sitake felt like there needed to be a move made at that position with Steve Clark being let go alongside Daryl Funk. And the offensive line position, uh, uh, that offensive line coach position was filled relatively quickly, whereas this one with the tight ends, it was kind of mums the word on, on what BYU was doing. There were rumors out there of could they be interested in this guy? Could they be interested in that guy? I'll tell you what, in all of the conversation, I mean, every single conversation I had with people connected to BYU and about this coaching search, never once, I swear on everything, I never once did the name Kevin Gilbride come up in conversation. But when that announcement came that BYU is making him their new tight ends coach, it made all the sense in the world. This is a guy who has got a lot of credentials, most notably his time in the NFL is going to, I think, benefit BYU's tight end position. The one thing I think, and this is my personal opinion on the matter, as to why a change was made with Steve Clark at the, as the tight ends coach for BYU was because, look at the development of BYU's tight end of the recent past. It just hasn't necessarily been all that great. Isaac Rex has been phenomenal. And by the way, Isaac Rex, if you did not see the touchdown catch he had at the Hula Bowl over the weekend, I would encourage you to get on social media or just Google it and just, just marvel at that man's ball skills. What a one-handed reception. That's going to have some people in NFL uh, talent evaluators talking about him saying, hey, maybe this is a kid we'd, it's worth taking a flyer on. Now, it's still going to depend on his pro day results and all that, but I think it was a very very good thing that he was able to show out like he was, but getting back to the point at hand is the BYU's tight end position. It's kind of been a group of talented individuals, but where is the development? Where is the production from this p position group? The thing about it is BYU has had four-star talents coming into this program who have not been able to get on the field for whatever reason, and is that point to their ability? Is it point to the coaching ability? Well, BYU made the first move, and they appointed to the coaching ability and made a move with Steve Clark uh, being let go, and now bringing in Kevin Gil Kevin Gilbride. I think the one thing about Kevin Gilbride he does bring is he can point to guys he has coached in the NFL. Now, are they the likes of Rob Gronkowski and George Kittle? No, but Evan Engram, Victor Cruz, those are all guys who have had a uh, pretty good uh, careers in the NFL, and Kevin Gilbride had a hand in coaching all of them. He spent his longest stint in the NFL with the New York Giants. Victor Cruz obviously had those Pro Bowl seasons, and 
Kevin Gilbride was right there along for the ride coaching this guy up. So the one thing I think that he brings immediately to that position group is he walks in the door, says, hi, my name's Kevin Gilbride, you're your tight ends coach. I've coached this guy, that guy, and that guy, and I can help get you guys to the NFL because I know what it takes to get there. I know what it takes to have production at that level. I think this is going to be a very, very savvy hire for BYU. Now, does Kevin Gilbride have the chops to go out there and be the top-notch recruiter that, frankly, uh, Steve Clark was? That is TBD because he has spent the vast majority of his 20-plus years in the NFL. He spent some time in college as, at the outset of his career as a GA as well as a position coach, but the vast majority of his time has been in the NFL, and as many of you are well aware, the NFL, you get your talent via the draft and free agent signings. It's not via recruiting. So have to prove his chops out there on the recruiting trail, but I think that he has got the hunger within him if he's taking a position of this magnitude and coming back to BYU, and he wants to get after it. I think that this is going to benefit BYU's tight end position group because that's the one thing that I hope that he can bring is the fact that he said, I've coached at the NFL level. I can help get you guys there, and that's what needs to happen because you think about it right now. BYU's got some very talented tight ends. The most notable are the two four-star freshmen and Jackson Bowers as well as Reiner Swanson. Those are two thoroughbreds that are coming into BYU. You've got to be able to maximize and get the most out of those young men as you possibly can, and I hope that Kevin Gilbride can come in and do that because you also look at guys like Mata Avataase, you look at a Ray Paulo, you look at uh, also uh, Mason Fakahua. There are different talent uh, skill sets in that tight end position group, and I can tell you BYU's coaches are hopeful that all of them, and I am say, saying the whole group of tight ends, will take a step forward here with some skill development hopefully this year under the direction of Coach Gilbride. So we'll see how it ultimately pans out, and we'll see uh, how the recruiting chops uh, go for a guy like Coach Gilbride, but I, I can I can tell you that this is a guy that BYU, and talking with people around the program, they are very excited for. It took them some time to ultimately get him locked down and hired, but that's kind of the BYU way. We've seen a number of moves made over the weekend in just a couple of days' time, and as uh, Jeff Hansen, uh, obviously from Cougar Sports Insider, w- uh, pointed out, can you imagine BYU making a coaching move in two days or 48 hours or less? That's not going to happen. You remember when Bronco Mendenhall left, it was I think uh, December, it was early, early December, I think it was December 3rd or 4th, and then Kalani wasn't hired until that New Mexico, well, not the New Mexico, well, the Las Vegas Bowl uh, two or three weeks from that time. So it, it, it's it's nice to see BYU finally finish up their coaching staff. And like I said, Kevin Gilbride now brings it all kind of around. And we'll see how it ultimately pans out because you got to have a guy like Kevin Gilbride step up and lead BYU's tight ends to prominence. And at the same time, you look at that offensive line position group and you've got to have some production there as well. you got to have improved production, I guess I should say, uh, from 2023 if you want to have any success in 2024. So the, the clock is ticking. And I think BYU's coaching staff is fully aware of that, Kalani Satake, Aaron Roderick, on down the list. They all understand what's at stake here, and they know they've got to get to work, and obviously the off-season workouts are underway, and then spring camp will be here before we know it, and that's that's a very exciting proposition because we are still counting down the days uh, to the start of the BYU football season and looking forward to it, and there's still 230, 229 today, whatever it is. It's way too long, and looking forward to all the same. All right, so, uh, like I said, let me reiterate, I really like this hire. I think it's a sad Savvy hire for BYU, and the fact that his name didn't leak at all uh, indicates to me that he was that far off everybody's radar or BYU kept it completely under wraps, which is kind of a rarity these days when it comes to the BYU circles out there. But nonetheless, I think a solid hire, and welcome to Coach Gilbride as he joins the BYU football program. All right, so as I mentioned, I also didn't get a chance to do a postcast edition of uh, looking back at BYU basketball's win at UCF. They made history on Saturday, both the men's and women's teams, I should add, uh, with wins on Saturday. We'll talk about all that as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapped up, my friends. The first uh, weekend of playoff football is nearly in the books. There's still time to get in on the action with our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The best part is the app is super easy to use. There's many different ways to bet, like live, same-game parlays you can take advantage of in the middle of a game. Find bets on the new Explore tab. Maybe there's a bet you hadn't considered that's available to you. 
you can take advantage of that. You also can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays that other people are putting money down on. So take advantage of it today, my friends, and get started. And by the way, if you want to do more simple stuff like a money line, player props, spread, over, under, whatever it is, it's all available to you now from our friends at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you make your first bet a layup once again, my friends. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. It's all courtesy of your friends at FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. want to remind you guys that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel right now. All right, BYU basketball, huge win over the weekend. I'm not going to mince words. I think BYU getting the first ever Big 12 win is momentous. It's something that should be celebrated. And it did not come easy for the BYU men's basketball program. And I also got to give a shout out to the BYU women's basketball program. They beat Cincinnati at home as they uh, clinched their first ever Big 12 win. Uh, That's a huge win for the women's basketball team because uh, that was a program that seemed like, okay, we'll see what it it takes for BYU to get over the hump for women's basketball because this is such a young uh, program relatively, but a nice win for them, 68-58 to over the Cincinnati Bearcats, something the men's team couldn't do inside the Marriott Center. The women's team did do, but BYU, number 18 in the country, went to Orlando to Disney World and got the win over UCF, 63-58. to Now, Ali Khalifa, folks, what a sensational performance from that uh, young man, I guess I should say man, just in general, because what a jam he had going right down the lane. I think he put a lot of uh, Big 12 programs on notice saying, okay, this guy can go to the rib and jam it on people. He can yam it on somebody. Okay, we have to watch out for all of it now with him because his passing ability opens up the floor so much for BYU, makes the Cougars so much more dynamic on offense, and then he goes and scores a season-high 17 points in this win over UCF. Uh, I really, really am impressed with Ali Khalifa. And the one thing I'll take away most notably from that jam uh, for Ali Khalifa, he has talked about the fact that he is still having his knee, his right knee that he's got all that uh, big brace on and everything, the sleeve on it. Uh, He is saying it's been getting better and better. Well, the fact that he's able to launch off that leg, he went one leg hop off that leg and jammed it, that indicates to me that that knee's getting as close to healthy as it probably will get this season. We'll have to ask him about that media availability this week if we get a chance to, but it was good to see that. Now, Can BYU follow up that win over UCF with a win tomorrow night against Iowa State? Well, stay tuned for our Tuesday edition of the podcast. We'll preview that more in its entirety. But this is a big, big result for BYU because this was a game that BYU should have handled down the stretch, but they did not make it easy on themselves, as I mentioned. BYU's free throw shooting, and trust me, the the postcast uh, comments I, I anticipated using in a postcast edition of the show, uh, I'd say 60 to 70% of them pointed to BYU's free throw shooting in this game. And it was not good enough for BYU. What was it? 70.6% from the free throw line for BYU. Just, you can't you can't uh, afford for BYU to be shooting as poorly at the free throw line as they were in this game and expect to continue to get wins. They, they pulled this one out. It's a very, very solid win for BYU. Let me be very clear about that. But free throws, 12 of 17, and it feels like it was even worse than that for BYU. They ended up 9 of 26 from three-point line, uh, 21 of 52 overall. So they didn't necessarily shoot it all that great. But the tenacity of this BYU men's basketball team is I think they learned their lessons from Cincinnati. They learned lessons from Baylor. And they finally kind of let those sink in as they ground out a win over UCF. I think this is a win that is going to help BYU as the season progresses here because uh, I'll also point this out, and it was pointed out on social media on Saturday. One team in the Big 12 won a road game in conference action on Saturday. Yeah, that would be the Brigham Young University Cougars. They went to UCF and won. Every other Big 12 game went to the homestanding team in all those matchups. Road wins in this conference are not going to be easy to come by. We we learned, that I think, that lesson watching BYU on Tuesday at Baylor. BYU has their work cut out for them if they want to continue to win big games on the road. But this is a game I think it was a little bit of a gut check for BYU. And I'm sure that during that game, after some of the failings they had had earlier on with a Big 12 play so far, those two losses they had suffered before that, I'm sure there were a couple of guys just in their heart of hearts saying, okay, is this going to happen again? Are we going to come oh so close but lose? yet again. The nice part was I think BYU dug deep, found a way to get through it, and got the W. 
you, we can't we cannot ignore that part of it because it's a huge huge result for BYU and like I said gives them some momentum as they go into this game against Iowa State and then they're right back out on the road on Saturdays they head to Texas Tech and I'm telling you Every one of these road games for BYU, they're going to go, let's see, actually, so they're going to face West Virginia and Oklahoma back-to-back in a couple of weeks' time. I swear, every single one of these road games, it seems like it's a daunting prospect for BYU to go out there and get a win. And it's going to be a daunting prospect, it feels like, for anybody in Big 12 play. Might I remind you, UCF, just three days prior to losing to BYU, upset number three Kansas in their uh, in their home gym down there in Orlando. Their fan base was rocking and rolling. They wanted to have another top 20 upset as they take down BYU. BYU did not let that happen. And that is a feather in the cap of Mark Pope's squad. We cannot ignore the fact that this was a very, very solid win for BYU. I really was impressed with what the Cougars showed as they ran out this win. Because just down the stretch, you're like, okay, they're melting down here. They are absolutely melting down, uh, getting sped up too often. Dallin Hall, uh, guys like uh, just he was letting the pressure get to him, and he's not the only one in that circumstance that was not letting the pressure get to them. But inopportune turnovers, uh, I thought that a, a call that should have been overturned given BYU the ball that was not overturned, they kept the ball with UCF on that out-of-bounds call. But nonetheless, I, I think that BYU – learn from their failings in the first two Big 12 games, maybe even more importantly, go maybe go all the way back to that game they lost at Utah in the non-conference slate and said, you know what? We're not letting this happen again. We're going to find a way, and that's exactly what they did. Now, we'll talk tomorrow about where the rankings stand, as I do not have the new rankings. Those will come out on Monday morning, and we'll talk more about where BYU falls to. If they do fall out of the top 25, I don't think they do. I think they drop somewhere in the 23-24 range in my mind after the loss to Baylor and the win over UCF, but We'll see how the pollsters reward them in that circumstance. But it's a very, very positive sign that BYU could find a way when things were going against them. Think about it. The home crowd is going nuts. They all have those palm fronds that they were waving in unison, and BYU couldn't seemingly buy a bucket, especially at the free throw line down the stretch here. And BYU just found a way, plain and simple, to get that win. And that should be celebrated. I Don't get too down on this squad right now because – too too often it could have been this BYU team says okay we're gonna we're just gonna let things uh, kind of let go of the rope or we're gonna let things slip out of our out of our grasp here they held on they got to their like the last knot in that rope and held on for dear life and they got the W so congratulations to Mark Pope I think you'll learn a lot from this and Ali, Ali Khalifa continues to be an absolutely incredible uh, story it's it's awesome to see it was it Mike O'Donnell from CBS Sports called him the most uh, I guess cerebral or smartest basketball intelligence player player in the country. He's not far off from it. Ali Khalifa's ability to see the floor, kind of just anticipate stuff, dump off passes. As you saw when he went and dunked that ball, I swear everybody in the gym, yours truly included, watching at home on my couch in uh, Saratoga Springs, Utah, was like, all right, he's not going to drive and actually throw it down. And what does he do? Goes right down the lane and yams it on a dude. That... That was awesome to see. So Ali Khalifa showing out well. Yes, Dallin Hall is struggling. For those of you who want me to, to rip on this young man, folks, let me just say this about Dallin Hall. Who else does BYU have at point guard? And don't say Trey Stewart. Trey Stewart's out of the rotation right now. I, I, for whatever reason, Trey Stewart is not, is, is not in the rotation. So it, unless Trey Stewart has suddenly found a way to make big buckets, make big threes, and uh, really uh, run this offense to a, to a high degree, which we have not seen uh, in large doses this season, Dallin Hall is st- here to stay as your starting point guard because, frankly, there ain't nobody else on the roster. You make a Lee Khalifa the point guard? I don't think so. His ability to direct the offense in the half court sets is awesome, but I do not see Mr. Six Foot Eleven Egyptian Magician bringing the ball up the court every single time. I just don't see that happening. So uh, I'll leave that uh, piece there as well. But a big win for BYU, also a big win for BYU women's basketball and. We'll see. Look, looking forward to seeing them. Hopefully, uh, continue to keep doing their things. The women's team is back out on the road this Wednesday. They'll have more on that as the week, uh, as that gets a little bit closer to Wednesday when they're back in action. But a big win for BYU men's basketball. And if you want a chance to win a pair of tickets to go watch BYU play uh, against uh, Iowa State tomorrow night, uh, you if you have, to, you have to join our subtext community that we have here for Locked On Cougars. It's a 14-day free trial. You can sign up for it. I see if it's the right option for you. Four ninety-nine, five dollars a month after that for direct 
direct communication with me via text message. If you'd like to be uh, a chance to win tickets, whether it's for Iowa State or any other home game for BYU down the stretch, they're going to our subtext unit. It's a way to win them, and we'll do the cutoff. We'll probably give those tickets away sometime uh, Monday afternoon. I'll say let's let's say like four o'clock. That'll be the cutoff, and we'll we'll uh, make sure you get in contact with the winner. We uh, we'll get you guys those tickets. You can go out and watch BYU and Iowa State Tuesday night, and we'll like I said, we'll preview that game uh, more on tomorrow's podcast, our Tuesday edition of Locked On Cougars. All right. Uh, coming up here in just a minute, we'll finish out this edition of the show with other news and notes from BYU teams in action over the weekend. An incredible mark set at the indoor track uh, for BYU inside the Smith Fieldhouse over the weekend. We'll get to all of that here momentarily. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. The UCC mobile banking app is paying your entire family to learn about money, my friends. All of us want to be smarter when it comes to our finances and money in general, and that's where Learn and Earn comes in. It's, uh, it breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia, and every time you or a family member completes a topic, you earn points that can be accrued and redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. I can tell you I've been doing a Learn and Earn since the new year, and I am on the verge of getting my first gift card to Amazon. My wife will be very happy to spend that gift card very quickly for me, but nonetheless, it's a great way to learn about money, and the best part is there's age-appropriate content for every member of the family. All can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards. Learn, earn, learn and Earn is inside the UCC mobile banking app, so you can play it anytime, anywhere, and more importantly, the more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking program, program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of your friends at UCCU. Love where you bank. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Jace Medical. I know we all come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for just a moment about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of a crazy flu, uh, RSV, and whatever other respiratory disease that's out there a season. That's a scary, scary proposition. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if one of my loved ones did not have the drugs or the the, the antibiotics they needed. Uh, if there's a supply chain issue keeping them from getting that life saving and medication right when they need it. Thankfully, we're all going to be okay with our Jace case that we have because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial inv- infections, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. The best part is, uh, the, the best or the worst part of this is, is that this stuff could happen to any of us and they want you guys to be prepared. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be resu- re- reviewed by a board certified physician and your medical Medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today, my friends. So go to jacemedical.com, get that Jace case today. And while you're there, use, while you're there, use the promo code Locked On to get $20 off your first order. Once again, that's jacemedical.com. Get your Jace case today, all from Jace Medical. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, day whenever you hear and or view this. Uh, I got a new webcam, by the way, recently. And I, this is the first time I've utilized it, got it all set up over the weekend. So I don't know if necessarily if it's like coming through, if you're watching this on YouTube, if it's any cleaner uh, video feed. But let me know if it is. I, I'm interested to hear your guys' feedback on it. Uh, it's not necessarily top end, but nonetheless, we'd love for you guys' feedback on that if you if you care about such things. And as I mentioned just a little bit earlier on, please join our subtext community a great way to interact with the show support the show and obviously have you guys be a bigger part of the podcast as well all right a uh, couple of the things before we go on today's show congratulations to aiden troutner a junior distance runner i uh, marked the first sub four minute mile at the smith field house over the weekend 359.2 second mile uh, apparently when you adjust it for altitude it drops to 354.21 so absolutely incredible showing for aiden troutner on the indoor track there at byu Awesome. Awesome stuff. Puts him number one in the country. As you might imagine, when you run a sub four minute mile, that's very impressive stuff. Good showing for him over the weekend. And I, I can tell you, watching the, the film of him coming across the finish line, you can tell he put everything into breaking that record. And it's 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 nothing to to sniff at because I, I can tell you this much. I ran a sub six minute mile at one point in my life. I, I'll tell you right now, if I break 10 minutes, I'd be ecstatic. But there was one point in my life I broke six minutes. I remember looking at the person who was timing me, and I looked at them and said, you're sure about that? And they point, They showed me the, the stopwatch and said, if you ran all four laps there, you ran, You were, I think it was like in the 550s, and I was about, I was floored. The idea of running a four-minute, a sub-four-minute mile 
is just ludicrous in my mind. So congratulations to Aiden Troutner. Congr- just awesome. Awesome stuff to see him get the job done there. Uh, also, congratulations to the BYU Women's Gymnastics team. They were taking part in the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad event on Saturday night at the uh, Maverick Center. They finished with a team score of 196.100, uh, which got them third place in that quad event. Uh, they uh, Cal won the event. Number 14, Michigan in second place. Number 19, BYU in third place. And then NC State bringing up the rear. BYU is right back in action gymnastics-wise tonight. They are up in the Maverick Center once again. They're for there for the fifth annual Best of Utah meet, competing against Southern Utah, Utah State, and obviously National Powerhouse Utah in that one. We'll see how BYU performs in that. We'll have an update for you guys on that tomorrow. And then a uh, final note on the BYU side of things for BYU programs in action over the weekend. A split of matches for the BYU men's uh, volleyball program. Number nine ranked Cougars uh, beat Loyola Chicago in five sets, as we mentioned, on Friday, but then lost in five sets to number 15 Lewis on the road. So a tough loss for BYU in Neil Carey Arena Saturday evening. It's the first loss for BYU of the year, but the nice part is BYU comes back home. They start, uh, excuse me, they, they're they back on the road this weekend before they come back for a homestand. They head to UC Santa Barbara for a pair of matches. That begins uh, Friday, January 19th. So this Friday at 6 o'clock Pacific time, that'll be obviously be 7 o'clock Mountain time, but Hopefully, BYU can bounce back. We'll see where they land in the national rankings when those come out as well later this week. And then I want to give a big shout-out. A big NFL weekend that continues today, by the way. We still have two more games to go with the Wild Card weekend. But uh, four former Cougars are moving on the in the NFL playoffs. And the first guy I'm going to mention is Pukunakua. Folks, what an incredible story Puka Nakua has been. He set another NFL rookie record, a rookie a record for receiving yards in an NFL playoff game, ended up with nine receptions, the record 181 yards, also had one touchdown. Imagine what the Rams might have done had they, you know, looked at Puka Nakua in the red zone a little bit more. It seemed like they were just, like, really going uh, everywhere but... Puka Nakua's way in the red zone. We had that big touchdown, 50-yard pass. Uh, tough loss for them as they fall to the Detroit Lions. Excuse me, so I, I've screwed up on that. I should have said three Cougars moving on, one not moving on with Puka obviously losing out. But I apologize. I screwed that up. In my, I, was, I, I was getting ahead of myself. But nonetheless... Tough loss for Puka Nakua and the Rams, but the nice part about a guy like Puka Nakua, he established himself as a bona fide playmaker in the NFL this year. This is a guy who looks like he's on the cusp of doing something really special. He was far and away their best receiver on the night. Nine receptions, 181 yards, as I mentioned. Next closest in terms of receptions is Demarcus Robinson with three. He had 10 targets, uh, caught nine of them, 90%. It's just it's awesome to see Puka Nakua living his dream. Alas, it did come in that loss uh, for him, but uh, the good news is I think the Rams have got a future star on their hands. And that's nice to see for Puka Nakua. Really, really fun for him. Uh, Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs endured a minus 28 uh, uh, wind chill as they got the big win over the Miami Dolphins to advance Matt Bushman on the uh, Chiefs practice squad. He obviously moves on with the Chiefs there. And then Zane Anderson. Some of you may have lost track of Zane. He is playing for the Green Bay Packers, and they went into uh, Dallas and absolutely trounced the Cowboys. Uh, got a big win for the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Packers are going to be facing my beloved San Francisco 49ers on Saturday. Uh, Talk all the trash you want, but I'll be rooting on my Niners uh, as they take on the Packers. It feels like it's back to the 1990s for me as a young man growing up watching Brett Favre and Steve Young and uh, Jeff Garcia and all those guys do battle back in the 90s. But uh, it's going to be fun. It's fun to see these guys getting an opportunity to move on. Uh, But the three former Cougars and Andy Reid, Bat Bushman, and Zane Anderson move on as Puka Nakua comes up just a little bit short in his rookie campaign. But the records are there. The records are there for Puka Nakua to make a run at Offensive Rookie of the Year. As this is a quarterback-driven league and the storyline around C.J. Stroud with the Houston Texans and them winning in the playoffs, I'm not going to lie, I do expect that it's going to be C.J. Stroud winning Offensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL as much as that pains me to see because pains me to say because I want nothing more than to see Puka Nakua's record-breaking season uh, rewarded for what he's done on the football field for the Rams this year. But as I mentioned, quarterbacks seem to r- rule the day when it comes to the NFL and uh, maybe I'll be surprised, but I, I'm, I'm my, my money's on C.J. Stroud getting that Rookie of the Year honor. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens. But congratulations to all those guys moving on. And once again, congratulations to Puka. What an incredible season it was for that young man. All right, there you go. That's it for today's edition of the podcast. Uh, thank you for bearing with me as we recap the weekend that was. We'll be back tomorrow. We're previewing BYU basketball against Iowa State. I've also got some uh, hopes to talk to some people around the BYU football program, some extra intel on uh, Kevin 
Gilbride, etc. So hopefully I'll have more for you on that on tomorrow's edition of the podcast. And stay with us all week long. We have plenty of coverage for you guys on all things BYU, as we always do right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. So once again, as I often say, thank you for making it your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers. And of course, thank you for tuning in all the time and supporting the podcast. This has once again been the Locked On Cougars podcast. We will talk to you guys again soon.